you sort of seem like sisters. Yeah, no. do we? Yeah. Aww, Good. What a compliment. Aww. What was it like working with each other on set? It was a nightmare. It was uh, <laughs> a nightmare. We, we really don't join. We actually did not get to spend that much time together on screen, which was disappointing, but it was. We spent a lot of time together off screen, so that was cool. We did, yeah. Well, when I went to New Zealand, which is where we shot most of the movie, um, even when Rosie wasn't working, you'd come on set sometimes. Mm. So. Didn't have anything else to do, so. Good. <laughs> Something I was really impressed with, I didn't catch on to your accents at all. Did that take a lot of practice for you, or is it a natural thing? I think in New Zealand, we've, we're exposed to a lot of British and American mm. film and television, so I definitely was very familiar, and I'd done the American accent quite a few times before, but it had always been quite generic. So we were trying to make it a little more Eastern for this, and being from kind of all over the place as we were, we worked with a dialect coach to yeah, make us all did. match. We had a, a great more. dialect coach, and mm. we used to work individually, and we used to work in groups as well to make sure that we all had a similar sounding accent. So, Rose, you said that you really enjoy reading scripts. Mm. What impact did this script in particular have on you? Well, because I was a fan of the novel as well, um, and I'd read the novel independent of the script, I was thrilled when I read the script at how well I thought it translated. I think Pete had took what made a big impression on him from the story, Pete and Fran and Phil, and um, and made something that was really true to the heart of what, what was written and what was conceived when The Lovely Bones was invented. So I feel like, uh, I think all of the different moments, I think the things he chose to emphasise and the way he portrayed the family and the idea of grief, and it just, I thought it was an incredibly well written script. Mm. You said that you felt very safe in Peter Jackson's hands. Uh, as an actor, yeah, um, is that a typical thing on a Hollywood set? Do you feel respected as you know young actors and artists? I think what was most notable about Pete said is it was more than just being respected. It was like um, like your ideas weren't just respected; they were valued, and yeah. you know, and what you brought to the table and what you suggested, he would take a hundred percent seriously. Yeah, they and were taking into had, account. Which yeah, was good. and then because he had such a strong vision as well you know, obviously he would refine them and guide them into, into creating the performance that he really wanted. And I felt like we were definitely in safe hands. You couldn't really ask somebody to make better decisions. Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes you work with directors, and I'm, I've been very lucky, um, but you do work with directors who don't really know what they want. And that can be a very scary place and a very scary position to be in for an actor. And especially when you're dealing with darker subject matter and yeah. these kind of sensitive topics, you really want the director to know exactly what how they want this portrayed. Mm -hmm. So I felt like Pete from the off knew how he wanted everything to be shown. And, yeah. And it was a matter of just finding that from each of us. Mm. The ensemble is fantastic. Mm. Susan Sarandon's character is certainly tragic, but I found myself <laughs> laughing. <and laughs> She's very funny in it. Yeah. So those one-liners, what's it like to be on set with her when she's cracking those? I mean, how do you keep yourself contained well, on camera? Well, that's on-set and off-set. I, mean, I mean, you had more scenes with Susan than I did. But. She was just so funny. I and mean, she would just be sitting around and she'd make you laugh. So it certainly yeah. wasn't, you know, like, just when the camera's rolled, she turned on this humor. That was, that's who Susan is, which is great. She's very naturally relaxed and funny. And uh, she doesn't really put on a show for anyone. No. It's just who she is. So I think she, I mean, she, of course she's not like Grandma Lynn, she's, <laughs> you know. A little more onto it. Than uh, yeah, Lynn. a bit more elegant if you like. But, um, but no, she's, she's fantastic and a very, very lovely woman to be around. Stanley Tucci. Mm, Super Mr. creepy. Mr. Tucci. The Tooch. The Tooch. Ah, oh, we mm. love Stanley. We do. Yeah. Was it hard to not see him as such a creeper off camera after <laughs> seeing that performance? It was more, well, we met him as Stanley, not as Mr. Mm. Harvey, so we got to know him as a person we really liked yeah. and trusted, and, and we had a great laugh with him when we were spending time together, so then when he would transform into this horrific, monstrous character of Mr. Harvey, it, that was the creepy part, when we realised how he could play something just so incredibly different from who he is. Yeah, and I think because Stanley's personality is so likeable, Mm. You don't want to remember him when he's on screen. Mm. You don't. You want to leave that behind because that's, of course, not who he is. Mm. Um, and embrace Stanley and his personality and just his loveliness. Um, so yeah, it wasn't very easy to to see him as that. to see him as Mr. Harvey. Yeah. Because he's wasn't enjoyable for us to see him yeah, having to be. He's there. a friend of ours, and you wouldn't mm -hmm. want to see him in that light anyway. 